Welcome, dear listeners, to the Carolina Haints Podcast, brought to you by Recovered Productions and A Darker World. I'm your host, Dan Sellers. The Appalachian Mountain Range runs along the North Carolina-Tennessee border, but the two states share more than just rolling misty peaks. A cat-like beast is said to roam this area. It's described as a howling, evil creature with glowing eyes of yellow that pierces men's hearts, driving them into insanity. And it walks upright like a human. The Cherokee believed it was a demon named Iwa. Some know it as Gollywampus. Others call it the Whistling Wampus. But it's most commonly known as the Wampus Cat of the Appalachians. Legend has it that the beast can transform into a woman and has also been seen as a combination of half woman, half cat. No, not like Catwoman. The creature has been reported as far back as 200 years ago. And, the lore says, is cursed to wander the Appalachian Hills for all eternity. According to the full legend, the Wampus Cat was a beautiful Cherokee woman who did not trust her husband. He would often go on very long hunting trips with some other tribesmen. She was convinced that he was having an affair, and finally one day she followed him into the woods. It was forbidden for the women to participate in the tribe's hunts in any way whatsoever, so she covered herself with the pelt of a mountain lion. When the men stopped for the night, they built a campfire and settled in around it. They each told stories of the great hunts and performed powerful magic rites. The woman hid nearby and listened to their tales. Now, if a woman being in the woods with the men during a hunt was forbidden, for a woman to witness the tribe's secret magical rites was extremely taboo. She was discovered and brought before the group of warriors. The elders allowed the woman to stand witness to one last piece of tribal magic. They cast a remarkably powerful spell on her. The mountain lion hide that she was wearing slowly began to spread and bond with her own flesh. Her teeth lengthened into fangs. Her face became more cat-like. And she grew a furry tail. She became the wampus cat. Maybe that's why so many hunters and campers have reported being stalked through the forests of the Appalachian Mountains. Of course, there's no shortage of fearsome creatures in those hills, from the common bear to allegedly Bigfoot. But these reports were different. These reports claimed to see a giant cat. Like the group of campers who were reportedly attacked while in the Virginia section of the Blue Ridge Parkway, One of the men claimed they were besieged by, quote, a thing, definitely not a primate, no Bigfoot or anything, and not a bear. I swear we were almost killed by a walking cat, end quote. Another story tells of a poacher who went out hunting one night. As he neared a bend in the trail, His dogs got spooked and ran off into the woods. As the man turned the corner, he was overcome by a horrible stench. Like a skunk and a wet dog. But that was nothing compared to the shock when he found himself staring face to face with the wampus. He said it was as big as a panther, but walked upright. He claimed its eyes glowed orange in the dark of the night. As you may expect, all intentions of poaching drained from his thoughts as quickly as the color did from his face. 
He dropped the gun and ran as fast as he could. Foolish, perhaps. But none of us can deny the most primal of responses. Fight or flight. As he sprinted down the path, he could hear the creature gaining on him. He realized that there was no way he could make it back home. There was no place to go. He was deep in the woods. Then he saw a small abandoned hunter's cabin. He made a desperate dash toward the shack. He threw the bolt just as the creature slammed into the other side of the door. Surprisingly, the old door held up. The man spent the rest of the night sitting against the wall, hugging his knees and listening to the beast's pace relentlessly around the cabin. Finally, the first light of dawn cracked over the horizon. The wampus cat let out an ear-piercing shriek and ran off into the trees. These days, sightings of the wampus cat are few and far between, and many people just chalk it up to another fictitious myth of the North Carolina mountains. But those who have seen the mysterious beast know it to be a horrifying reality, still stalking the Appalachian Mountains, hunting for its next victim. Now, there is another, decidedly less vicious, creature working in the Appalachians. On the southern end of the Balsam Mountain Range is Eagle Nest Mountain, near Waynesville. At the turn of the century, 1900, a wealthy Waynesville businessman built a luxury hotel on the mountain called Eagle Nest Hotel. Guests at the hotel began to hear strange noises from an unusual creature that roamed the surrounding area. Some even claimed to see the strange beast firsthand. Mostly, though, were the feelings. Hikers would report having the distinct feeling they were being watched or having heard a rustling in the trees, turned to find nothing but a swaying branch or a half-seen shadow. The Balsam Mountain Range, you see, is the home of the Boojum. The Boojum has been described as a half-man, half-ape, half-bear, half-raccoon, and yet also as none of these. It simply is the Boojum. It stands seven or eight feet tall and is bipedal. He is covered in shaggy brown or gray fur, except for his face, which is reportedly very human-like. His eyes are almost always described as sad and soulful. It generally vocalizes itself through grunts and lip-smacking, but his screams can be heard echoing from ridge to ridge through the warm summer nights or resounding ominously in the misty, fog-filled darkness of the autumn. They are described as something of a mix between a hooting owl and a monkey or a growling of a tiger. Sounds like a Bigfoot, right? Sounds like it, but is it? At least not completely. North Carolina does indeed have a few Bigfoot reports. But the Boojum has a couple of qualities that no Sasquatch has ever demonstrated. First is its love of gems, and in fact anything shiny. It is said to hoard glass bottles and moonshine jugs. But mostly it loves searching the clear mountain streams for gemstones such as rubies, emeralds, amethysts, and sapphires. It would store the gems inside of the glass bottles and bury them in one of the numerous caves hidden around the Appalachian Mountains. Now, this was backwoods country, especially in the early 1900s, so only the richest people had running water. Most mountain folk would bathe in a secluded spot in the stream or under a waterfall. The only thing the Boojum loved more than hunting for the North Carolina rubies was spying on the local girls as they bathed themselves. It was not unusual for a girl to strip down, lower herself into a cool mountain spring, and hear something rustling in the bushes. Most of the time it was a bird or a squirrel, sometimes a rabbit or a mouse. But, once in a while, 
the girl would look up to find the hairy face of the boojum staring back at her. The girl would inevitably scream, jump out of the water, start naked, much to the delight of the shameless boojum, gather up her clothes and run away. But then there was Annie. When Annie found the boojum peeping at her, she didn't run. She just saw another mountain creature in the big brown eyes of the boojum. In fact, Annie began to feel so much for the boojum that she sought him out and proceeded to court him. Before long, she left her family and her home to go live with the boojum deep in the Appalachian woods as his wife. The legend says that Annie and the Boojum loved each other deeply. However, the Boojum never lost his desire for rubies and emeralds. So he would leave for days on end, searching for gems in the Balsam Mountain streams. The Boojum couldn't talk, but made shrill noises and screams. As I said earlier, they were described as part hooting owl, part monkey. When Annie would get lonely, where the boojum had been gone for home too long, she would go out to a clearing and howl for the boojum to return. She became known to the locals as that crazy hootin' nanny. But she didn't care, because more often than not, a similar scream would be heard from deep in the woods. Back and forth, Annie would scream to her boojum. As he followed the sound back home, to his beloved. Now, as fun and far-fetched as this tale sounds, it has at least some basis in reality. The calls between Annie and the Boojum were frequently heard by guests of the Eagle Nest Hotel. The luxury hotel boasted many prominent and well-to-do patrons. Fearing that the Boojum may drive away business, the owner, S.C. Satterthwaite, organized several Boojum hunts. Very little documentation exists about what happened next, but on April 22, 1918, the hotel burned to the ground. Did Satterthwaite succeed in killing the Boojum? Did a lonely and heartbroken Annie exact her revenge by burning down the building? Did Annie bear the Boojum children? Since the Eagle Nest Hotel fire, the Boojum has not been sighted nearly as frequently. But reports are still made to this day of strange noises and creatures in the woods and an unshakable feeling of being watched. Folklore experts agree that Annie's owl-like screech was the source of the term Hootenanny. It appeared around the turn of the 20th century and originally meant any kind of party or get-together, but was almost exclusively used to mean a get-together of rural or country folk. In the 1960s, it became to mean specifically a gathering of musicians and was introduced to a larger swath of the population thanks to the music of Pete Seeger and Woody Guthrie. Today, the Boojum legend is kept alive by the Waynesville microbrewery, Boojum Brewery. For more about the Wampus Cat, check out DemonHuntersCompendium.com and AppalachianHistory.net. And to learn more about the Boojum, check out GhostsOfAwesome.com, NorthCarolinaGhosts.com, and VisitNCSmokies.com. This episode was researched and written by Jeff Cochran and was produced by me, Dan Sellers. You can find everything that Jeff's up to at his company, A Darker World, at adarkerworld.com. And you can keep up with everything we're doing at Recovered Productions at recoveredproductions.com. Feel free to email me at recoveredproductions at gmail.com. You can find Caroline Hanks on iTunes, Google Play, and on YouTube. Please subscribe 
and leave us a review. It would be very cool of you if you would tell your friends about this show as well. And while you're at it, please consider contributing to our endeavors on Patreon. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash wreak havoc. We'll be back in two weeks with a new episode. Tune in then to hear more about the things that go bump in the night.